you use a th is this right a third yeah. of the salt yep so you legitimately cut your salt usage back by 60 to 70 percent right yeah. and we're going to learn exactly how this works plus we're going to learn pricing we're going to show you all of the equipment we're going to show you the entire operation behind this so these units are around thirty thousand dollars as they sit for this unit correct yep okay and you told me off camera that this unit will pay for itself in one to two applications at the rate that you guys apply. Yep, so the way we, we look at that ROI is possible. So let's summarize how you price out your liquid de-icing. It's three to seven dollars per gallon. Correct. On pre-treat you do 40 gallons and that's before the storm. Yep. Then you plow, post-treat you do double or 80, 80 gallons, gallons per acre. So what is our range? Yep. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, you guys. We got a pretty special show for you today because this we're gonna be talking about the future of ice control. And we're at a company called VSI and these guys have a very unique story. 10 years ago, they stopped using granulars for their ice control and switched completely to a liquid solution. And there's some changes coming down the pipeline that you guys should be aware of, but we're gonna meet one of the guys that's uh, the brainchild behind this thing. His name is Jordan, and he's right here. Jordan, how are you, buddy? Hey, Good to see you. Good to see you. So 10 years ago, VSI stopped using granulars entirely, yeah. and you were one of the very first people in the industry to switch to a brine solution. Yeah. Why? Yeah, great question. So uh, our snow contracting division, which is based out of Mankato, yeah. um, we, we're trying to look for ways to differentiate ourselves. We're a pretty small company. Um, Mankato is not a huge market, but big enough. Uh, at the time, we just had a couple guys, a couple trucks, real small operation. How can we attract some of these bigger clients in town? Liquids are one of the ways that we decided we try to do that, is, is go with an all-liquid program, less mess on their property, less tracking in their buildings. So we started testing some liquids and had really good results. Um, as a result of having good results with those liquids in our contracting business, eventually in 2014, we started VSI, we, we started manufacturing this equipment that we were using in our snow business. Okay, but one of the things that these guys need to know is that you use, a, is this right, a third yeah. of the salt. Yep. So you legitimately cut your salt usage back by 60 to 70%. Correct versus by just going with the brine solution versus the guys that are out throwing granulars and rocks out down everywhere. Yeah. And we're gonna learn exactly how this works. Plus we're gonna learn pricing. We're gonna show you all of the equipment. We're gonna show you the entire operation behind the scenes. Okay, so where do we go from here? The pricing, what, yeah. just tell me, tell me a little bit about how did you even figure out how to price this stuff out? Cause yeah. you were the first in the industry. So what did you find? Right. Yeah, so we kept it really simple. In fact, um, we, we had the same concerns and challenges year one. Uh, we didn't want our clients to experience a, uh, a pain of turning over the type of service we were providing. So we kept our pricing the exact same. We were pricing by the job, by the application. We continued doing that with our liquids. So the price we were charging for our granular applications, we carried over into our liquid applications. The good news for us as a contractor is that cost less to apply liquid applications, so we were just making more margin that way, but it kept things very simple and succinct for our clients. So if I'm understanding this right, when you use a liquid, you're using 60 to 70% less material, so you were saving on the same materials, but you're charging the customer the same, yep. and the material itself will go a lot further, right. so when you fill up your truck to go out and do liquid de-icing, yep. You're not making all of those return trips, so your productivity probably went up astronomically at that point. Yeah, we're able to service, uh, uh, you know, again, we were very small when we were using salters. We only had one salter, but we were able to do the work in about a third of the time with the liquid equipment versus the salting equipment that we had at the time. So now even with the size of our operation now being a lot bigger than it was, uh, we can do a fairly large portfolio with only three or four spray trucks. Okay, and you do no granulars None. at don't all. A, don't own a salt spreader. We have a few videos where we have a tailgate um, salter just for testing. We do not own a salt spreader for actual use in our business. And you cover 5 million square feet? Yep, approximately. Okay, so that's no, it's no little operation. Right. And you cover 5 million square feet with four pickup trucks? Uh, they're actually a little bit bigger. So we, we do have two pickup truck units. Um, we also have a uh, uh, like a, a 25 999 dump truck or a, a flatbed truck. So it's a just under CDL size, and then we have an F450. 
So that $25.99, $9.99 truck, the F450, and then the two pickup units. Okay, so let's dive into the pricing. Yeah. How do you price out liquid de-icing? Yeah, so every market's gonna be a little bit different. We okay. do have some in-depth resources that we can share with you guys. But in a nutshell, what we see throughout all of uh, the snow belt North America, that's US and Canada, is between three and $7 a gallon applied. Yeah. Now that's a huge range, and the reason the range is so big is because every market's different. Um, different labor rates, different cost of materials. But another big thing is the number of events you have each year. So here in Southern Minnesota, we have 30 to 40 de-icing events a year. Yep. In a market like St. Louis, they might only have five to 10. Well, to service five to 10, they still have to have the same number of equipment, the same amount of overhead, the same number of staff, same number of trucks, but they only get to use it five to 10 times. So their cost per application is much higher there than it is in a market like this. So that's why there's such a big price range difference on that. The other big difference is the size site. If you're going to spray in a bank parking lot, it only uses 80 gallons. Um, we're gonna charge a lot more per gallon than we are on a 30 acre site that, that uses a lot more obviously in a single trip. What is that price range again? Uh, three to seven dollars per gallon applied. So that's labor, materials, everything. But three to seven dollars per gallon, how far does a gallon go? Yeah, so when we're pre-treating, typically we're looking at about 40 gallons per acre. Um, when we're post-treating, typically we're looking at between 80 and 100 gallons per acre. So pre-treating is before the snow, post-treating is yep. after the snow. Okay, so give me those two again, one yep. more time. Yep, 40 gallons per acre for pre-treating. Okay. Double that to 80 for post-treating, or up to 100, or even a little bit more um, if there's a lot of snowpack or residual. So how you do your business is you pre-treat. Yep. Then you plow. Yep. And then you post-treat. Correct. And no rocks out shall ever be laid down in between there nope. because you had a very interesting stat that stopped me in my tracks and that was the cost per ton yep. of damage that salt does. Yep. And this is not something you guys came up with. This is something that's in the industry. Tell me what that is. Tell me those numbers. What yeah. So these, this is where it's really important for us as contractors to edu educate our clients. Um, but Fortin Consulting, uh, a company here in Minnesota, has done a lot of research on this. They run the Smart Salting Program for the MPCA. Um, they've shown that each ton of salt applied causes between $800 and $3,000 of damage, long-term damage to each property. So when you put down one ton of salt, that costs your client between $800 and $3,000 in long-term infrastructure damage. In costs. damage, so we're yes. talking about pavement Turf, damage. Pavement, yep, asphalt, um, um, underground structural steel, uh, turf, landscaping, rugs, carpet flooring inside the building, door jams, revolving doors, anything that corrosion can ruin is what we're talking about with that stat. And you're saying that with liquid de-icing, you don't get that because your boots aren't picking the granulars up and carrying them with, because once you apply that, it stays where it was meant to be put and it doesn't go where it's not supposed to be. So that's one big thing. Yes, you're absolutely correct. It does stay where you put it a lot better. Okay. Um, but another factor is that you're just using so much less salt. So because we're reducing our chlorides by 30 to 75%, depending on how much you're implementing with liquids, if you're just doing pre-treating, you're talking about 30% salt savings. That's still substantial. If you're talking about pre-treating and post-treating, now we're talking about 60 to 75% savings on salt. The actual tonnage of salt saved is even more impactful than the fact that we're using it in liquid form. We need to uh, maybe break this down into its simplest measure so these guys can understand why you have why you're using so much less material yep. because when you you're using the same material yep. you're using the same salt but not in its granular form you're, right. you're pre-mixing it yep. you're diluting it yep. you're getting it into a concentrate and then that allows you to control exactly how much material goes in a spot versus where if a granular falls on a countertop yep then that granular has to melt yep. and you don't know what the concentration is. You don't know what's going to happen. Is this, am I under following? You're saying this? correctly. Yeah. So when you spread salt, all you're doing is making salt brine on the ground. When that salt hits snow and ice, it makes salt brine on the ground. Yep. By applying salt brine directly, we're skipping that phase change and we can use a lot less salt. Scientifically, it only takes 150 to 200 pounds of salt per acre to get safe bare pavement in normal conditions. Most contractors are applying between 800 and 1,000 pounds per acre because we need those granules of salt this close together, not this far apart. If they're this far apart, those puddles spreading on the ground take too long. We don't get safe pavement fast enough. We have slip and falls. We have issues and unhappy clients. By applying the puddle directly to the pavement, we're applying that 80 to 100 gallons per acre, a little over two pounds of salt per gallon. 
That puts us right in the proper range of 160 to 200 pounds of salt per acre. And that's how you get the cost savings. Correct. And okay. And to do this, you guys had to build your own equipment because yeah. when you started, liquid de-icing wasn't even there. Yep. But now there's inklings that salt control, uh, the salt itself is going to become regulated. There's no way to remove it. It's not gonna break down over time. It's just gonna stay chloride forever and go wherever that water goes. Her work has led the public works crews calibrating their spreaders to use a lot less salt, and many have switched to pre-treating roads with brine, a liquid that's about 30% salt and can actually be a lot more effective. We have seen organizations reduce their salt use by 70% when they've switched to using liquids. This is the news. You only need about a 12 ounce cup of salt for a 20 foot driveway or about 10 sidewalk squares. And more doesn't necessarily work any better. And nothing works below 15 degrees. And no too, she says, to check the ingredients on any ice melt. They may be listed as environmentally friendly or pet safe, but if they contain chloride at all, they really aren't. We don't to date have some alternative product that we can just switch to. Um, that will, you know, magically get rid of our snow and ice and not have negative consequences for the environment. So uh, the advice, uh, in addition to using <laughs> salt sparingly, is to get better equipment too. This goes for homeowners to, to scrape more. What I didn't catch was she's the head of the MPCA, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and this is they're they're coming for us. Regulation's coming. It's already in certain states in the Northeast. Uh, Minnesota's a, kind of a front runner in the Midwest to start some, some legislation. I think in the next 10 years, we'll see salt regulated just like fertilizer and herbicide. It'll require licensing, log books, um, all kinds of stuff that we don't want to deal with. So let's try to be responsible and help slow down that regulation because we don't necessarily want it either, but it's coming because of how much salt is going into the uh, environment and because it only takes one teaspoon of salt to permanently pollute five gallons of water. So think about one teaspoon is five gallons, a hopper full of salt is millions of gallons of water that pollutes when you put down that salt. So reducing salt is important, drinking water is important, lakes and streams are important. Um, there's a lot of things there. A lot of other drivers towards liquid are that, um, you know, again, this $803,000 per ton of salt applied, these large corporations own this real estate. They don't want that long-term damage on their properties. They want to reduce salt on their properties too because they're actually paying more money in long-term infrastructure costs than they are paying their snow contractor to apply the salt. So let's reduce the salt as much as possible. So let's summarize how you price out your liquid de-icing. It's three to seven dollars per gallon. Correct. On pre-treat you do 40 gallons and that's before the storm. Yep. Then you plow, post-treat you do double or 80, 80 gallons, gallons per acre. So what is our range yep. then? So 120 to 280 per acre for pre-treat, uh -huh. uh, 240 to 560 per acre for post-treat. And that depends on how big your lot is and your market. If we're doing 30 to 40 events per year so we can charge less, yep. if you're doing less and you still have that overhead of the equipment that to, to pay for, well then you have to charge more. So you'd be on the higher range of that scale. So now Jordan's gonna take us out to the shop He's gonna uh, introduce us to David and David is going to introduce us to the equipment and how you actually use it. So Jordan, you actually helped found the company with David, yep. right? Yep. Okay, and guys, this is David. David, how you doing? Fantastic. And you're gonna show us the equipment that Absolutely. you guys have developed. So when you were in the baby stages of trying to figure this stuff out, you had prototypes built, but you've had 10 years of refining this and now you guys and boss have teamed up to make this available to everybody out there. Correct. Is right. that right? Yep. All right, we can't gloss over this. Boss actually now owns VSI. So the distribution network that Boss uses for all their snow plows and all their other snow equi equipment becomes available to customers of VSI. So that means you can order parts through Boss. You can get have service done. You can have all of those things that you've come to depend on by having a large distribution network is now available for these parts. Meaning you're not depending on two guys out in the middle of Minnesota to ship you your part if heaven forbids something happens to a piece of your equipment. You can get it from your local Boss dealer. 
Okay, so this is the setup right here. So what you're gonna see here is our 305 gallon model, and this is the Legacy Series, so our highest performing uh, equipment that we, we currently manufacture. One thing really cool that we've done is everything on the back here, the power head unit, the control box, the plumbing, is identical through our entire Legacy line. So what's really nice there is the, the power bundle, the 305, all of those units are the same up through our 1600 gallon, which is our largest skid mount unit. So you have these all just set up so we could see them. This is the this is the brains of the unit right here. Correct. Yep. And then you can couple that with a 500 gallon tank or a 300 gallon tank, depending on what your application is. Right. And we actually go all the way up to 1600 for a full skid mount unit. And uh, the power bundle is kind of the filler model where we can connect any size tank to it that we want. So if we have higher capacity, 3,000, 4,000 gallon tanks, this unit here is able to be connected to that that tank and perform all the same functions as our as our regular sprayer models. And this does not connect to a truck? Correct, so the entire system is wireless. And what's really nice there is we're able to set the unit in, strap it down, and pull it out at any point in time with no wiring going to the truck itself. So if the truck breaks down, you just lift it out, exactly. you can yep. put it in any other truck, and you can go, and this is controlled via two ways. Yep, so we have the, the first smart connected, which is an app on your phone available for I, iOS or Android. And what's nice about this is we don't have any in-cab controller, right? So any operator at any point in time can run the equipment and it can be in any truck. So as we open up the app here, you can see that we are able to connect via Bluetooth. And now we have full control over our sprayer. And we've integrated a lot of nice features and we have light bars, we have strobes, um, and then what you'll see here is the main main control page. So we have our automatic rate control where we set the application rate per acre. Um, we okay. Have, okay, this sorry. is where it gets really good. No, no, no. Okay. This gets really, really, really good because I don't like apps. You, you show me a smartphone app, that just means that I got to worry about my phone being charged up. You have a remote control that if the, your phone doesn't work, so let's just get that right out of the way. But your this app will actually control the application rate to the speed you're driving so you can't screw up. Correct, yep. Freaking mind blowing. If you guys do salt or ice control or what have you, that means when you go faster, the pump kicks in faster. Yep. When you slow down and you come to a stop, it just turns off. Exactly, we're gonna show you some really cool footage. I get goosebumps that over that but crap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the entire that. idea is that we can put any operator in the truck and the system will do all of the work for you. So we're able to be incredibly repeatable, incredibly accurate with the systems now with this technology. And to the point where you also timestamp the lots, you know exactly where, where, when the application has been done. You can show how many gallons were used on the lot and the only reason I point this out is if you are a ice control contractor, lawsuits become a big part of it. Absolutely. And you need to protect yourself. And this is a viable record. And people have, have actually used this to, to do that, yes, correct? Yes, they have. Yep, they've used it to show proof of work in, in court. And what we've really done with the systems through our experience as contractors is we've put every single um, element of design into what we needed the equipment to do for us. So we have a lot of cool features that you know you don't see in other equipment because it's valuable to us as contractors. Because you were ice control contractors, Correct. you weren't yeah. a manufacturer, you built this just because you needed it for yourself. Right. Okay, now as we look at this, I want, I want the good and the bad, mm -hmm. okay? This unit right here, compared to a granular spreader, is going to cost you how much? So when we look at a model like this, we're about uh, three times the cost, two to three times the cost of a regular V-Box spreader. But we're really not comparing apples to apples in the equipment, just due to all the tracking features and everything that we have built into these systems currently. As far as performance goes, we are far outperforming any V-Box spreaders. We have full control over our spray width with the three lane booms that we have on the systems themselves. And what that allows us to do is independently control where we are putting down the product. So with the V-Box spreader, we're um, using the spinner rate to control our spread pattern. But with this system, we're able to control our left, middle, and right booms all simultaneously. So 
As far as performance goes on this system, we will always be far superior to the V-back spreader. And how many gallons is this? So this one's 300 gallons. And how many acres will this cover? In a normal post-treatment application, we'll be covering about 3.2 to 3.6 uh, acres. Pre-treatment will be in the five to seven. So we can take a liquid product and stretch it much further than any V-box spreader. A truck like this would be carrying a yard and a half spreader. So we'd be seeing about you know, one acre for post-treatment in a heavy application and maybe two acres to three acres if we were lucky in a pre-treatment situation. So, so for you guys that may not have done this before and this is your first, you know, rodeo, that would mean if you're doing granular, you're, you do an acre, you run back, you get filled up. You do an acre, you run back, you get filled up. This will go seven acres of post-treatment compared to one acre. So this will do seven times the distance, three to seven times the distance. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I mean I'm just thinking in the best case scenario, but three to seven times the distance that a rock salt spreader right. will go. Right. And then one thing we've done with the systems too, and I'll pull the tailgate down again, is everything on this unit is self-contained for filling and pumping out. So unlike a V-back spreader where we need other equipment to load, skid loaders, payloaders, this system will handle all of it for you. So it's able to self-fill in the field and it's also able to pump out. And since we're transferring a liquid product back and forth, we can also transfer between other sprayers in the field without the need to have to run back to storage tanks. So you can fill here, you can transfer here. Correct. You've got a sidewalk spreader yep. over there, or if you've got a bag snow raider and you need to top that off, exactly. you can do all of that right out of the back of your pickup truck without a second piece of equipment necessary, but how do you mix the brine? And the first one we're gonna look at here is the, the Legacy Brine Maker. So this is uh, very simple in its design, um, but there is a lot going on with the system. And there's actually two tanks integrated into this one setup. And the, the first one with the hopper is where we add our salt. And you're adding the same salt that you would normally throw onto the roads. Right. So there's no special, I mean, let's get, let's just make, break this down as simple as we possibly can. Right. The same salt that you would throw on the roads, you're now throwing into a brine solution. You're making that into a, a concentrate, a liquid concentrate. Yep. And because you've now made that into a liquid concentrate, that's going, that just goes a lot further than that rock application. You guys should, I hope you guys understand that. So how much does a unit like this go for? So these units are around $30,000 as they sit. For this unit? Correct, yep. Okay. And you told me off camera that this unit will pay for itself in one to two applications at the rate that you guys apply. Yep, so the way we, we look at that ROI is it is always much cheaper to make salt brine yourself versus purchasing it on the market. And uh, especially if you don't have good availability for it because we're, we're transporting it back and forth. But just looking at the cost breakdown between buying salt brine yourself and making it yourself, we're seeing the ROI on this equipment be anywhere from 30,000 to 50, 60,000 gallons. So for a company our size, um, you know, we will, we will go through that much product in one or two events. So that just kind of shows you the benefit of making salt. And you cover yourself. 5 million square feet. Correct. So let's yep. get this. I want you guys to have all of the information. They cover 5 million square feet using this. So in one to two applications, you have paid for your salt. So if you don't cover 5 million, like I plow 1.8 to 2 million square feet. Mm -hmm. So roughly if I wanted to get into this in three or four applications, I would have this unit paid for. Right. Another one to two, I would have that unit paid for. And if I wanted to take baby steps into the industry, I wouldn't buy the big dog. Right. You have a baby, yep. you have a baby dog. So we offered an entry level or even, you know, a, a remote or satellite brine maker for, for larger companies. And this one's gonna do almost all of the same things as the Legacy, just at a smaller production rate. So where we're looking at two to 3,000 gallons per hour of output, we're slightly under 1,000 for the smaller one. It's a bag load unit, but obviously you can see that it's very compact. How much does this cost? We're around $8,000. 8,000, 30,000. Yep. Okay. And, and this, and this is called the what? The Brine Buddy. The Brine Buddy, and this yep. is called the? The Legacy Series. Brian. The Legacy Series. Yep. And if you guys, I want to help you guys get into this. If you can't afford 30,000, but you want to dip your toe in the water with eight grand, can we show them how you guys cheat? Yeah. 
So they have all of these storage. So they make brine. They're never caught with their pants down. You guys always make brine constantly. So we're gonna go outside because brine doesn't freeze. They've got all of these storage tanks set up. And then you actually have storage tanks out at remote locations right. filled as there. So you guys can pull straight up and remote fill. Yep. So one thing we have to think of is, you know, if we're replacing granular product with a liquid, we still need to have reserve on hand, right? Yep. And with liquid, it's much easier to store, much easier to handle. And we can also have locations like you said that are satellite in town um, in places that we wouldn't be able to store granular product. So now in a parking lot, we can have a 5,000 gallon tank that the truck can pull up, which would be the equivalent of a, you know, a 10 ton salt pile with a skid loader. But we remove all aspects of that storage and all as aspects of the equipment to handle that. So, you know, as far as the efficiency that goes, uh, the increase that we have, it is, it is night and day. Can we see it in operation? Yeah. All right, let's go show the truck in operation. So let's wash, rinse, and repeat some of this information because we're throwing a lot at you and I want you guys to have this information. The Legacy Brine mix will, will cost you 30 grand. Yep. The Baby Brine, what do you call this one again? The Brine Buddy. The Brine Buddy is eight grand. Mm -hmm. The formulas ch don't change. Right. You use standard rock salt in here, but you do put an additive in when it gets cold. Right. Okay, so if it gets a little colder, and you've got to do an additive in your salt anytime it gets colder because salt doesn't work at certain temperatures, so you got to know what the temperature is. And then you haven't laid granular salt in 10 years. Mm -hmm. You pre treat it mm -hmm. at half the rate, and then you plow it, and then you post treat it, and you charge for your pre treatment, right. you charge for your plowing, and you charge for your post treatment. Mm -hmm. And you guys cover 5 million square feet. Yep and the rates you're charging are three to seven dollars per gallon and you're going 40 gallons for pre-treatment and you're going 80 gallons for post-treatment so and your and your app will cover all of that that app will tell you exactly how many gallons were laid down so you could invoice off from that app mm -hmm. i mean this is a business in a box if a guy wants to know how to do this you guys got it covered absolutely but let's go show them how this treatment works is this pretty cool stuff? If you guys think this is cool stuff, if it's you think it's as cool as I think it is, a thumbs up goes a long way. I just had to drive two and a half hours to get here to do this, so it better damn well be cool for you guys. <laughs> now you do have some older units and I don't want to downplay these, but if a guy doesn't have the money to get into a high-end unit, you've got these. And the only problem with these units is they're like your old school spreaders. Right. They're wired into the truck. Yep. And you guys have got a self-sufficient unit that requires no wiring. It's just put it in the back of anything and you're in business. Exactly. You know, we broke the model line into, into two different, uh, the Legacy and, and Genesis series. Just for the, you know, the some guys don't have the high demand for the, the performance that the Legacy puts out. But so the Genesis series is much simpler in its form. It's wired to the truck. It's an on-off switch. But they do fill some niche um, areas of areas of application, uh, especially like the 305. It's either for sm smaller parking lots, smaller areas. I'm a big fan of them in route manager trucks where we're just going out doing spot checking, things like that. We don't need the full performance of the legacy. Um, but yeah, that's just a simple breakdown between the and two. And it's cheaper. Series. It's a lot Absolutely. cheaper. About yeah. half the price yeah. of one of those. Is it that helps right? With the barrier of entry for sure. Yep. yep. All right. Are we going out? Sounds good, yeah. Okay, so you can control everything right from in there, right? Can you turn it off for me from in there, David? So you can control off, on, absolutely everything from your phone or a remote, correct? Yep. Okay, so can you go, let's see how wide this will go. You say it'll go 30 feet? Yeah, we're about 36 feet on spray width. 36, okay, let's do the full width right now. Well, that's how she works. 
the steer from right here. So, it, so that's the, so this is the app. So you control all of it right from there. Right. Yep. And right now we're running in auto or manual mode, which allows us to open the sections however we want. But if we switch to the auto mode, you'll notice that. Uh, our rate adjust comes back and this is really the heart of the system. This is where we operate them most of the time And what we're doing now is we'll be able to even if we turn our boom sections on uh, It knows that we're not moving so no operator can actually waste any product Once we begin moving the engine's gonna throttle up and it's gonna dial everything into that 80 gallon spraker that we're, we're looking to hit So it'll automatically adjust it so it takes the thought process away from the operator right. And that's not, I'm not saying anything bad about the operators out there, but if you're an owner and representative of the business, you're going to want to make sure that your material isn't getting wasted, the proper application rates are going down, and that there's, this takes that guesswork completely Absolutely. out of the equation. And you know, there's enough things to watch when we're out plowing and, and out in the snow that this just makes it a much uh, more simple process, so you don't have to worry what's going on behind you when you're, up, when you're applying. And not everybody wants to use their phone. Is this the option? This is, is the remote? Yep. Okay, so there is a remote available to these guys. And so next what we're gonna show you is how that as you're driving, it automatically adjusts the flow rate. You're not gonna touch anything else. Right. You're just gonna let her, you're gonna let her buck and she's gonna do what she does. So, all right, next thing that we're gonna show you guys is how this controls it automatically. So he's gonna turn it on. And then as he speeds up, Without touching anything else, it's going to speed up the process. And when he gets to the end, we're going to show you how he can control it. All right, I'm ready when you are, David. And he has the ability from inside that cab. All right, shut her down. All right, let's go left. Center. Right. And that's how they control it. So it's it, when it's, I see it's dripping. Why? Is that is that wasting product or what's going on? No, so the, the volume that's in the hoses and the boom is actually pretty insignificant. But one of the things we've seen over the years is that booms that hold the product in them can cause a lot of problems. The water has a tendency to evaporate out, the salt can then be left in the boom and it begins plugging all of those individual nozzles. So one of the best things we've seen that is if that boom can get rid of all that material, we have a lot fewer problems with downtime and cleaning issues uh, with the booms themselves. Oh, okay, so you intentionally right. want it to drain out. Yep, and that's one of the big differences between our boom systems and other booms on the market is that we allow them to completely drain out. Okay, good to know. So you can see that he is covering both lanes as he's going down the road. That's how far that will throw it. All right guys, we've thrown a ton of information at you, but if guys want even more information, Jordan, where would they turn next? Yeah, so we have lots of educational informational videos on our YouTube channel. So just search Voight Smith Innovation on YouTube. Okay. Um, you can still visit our website. Lots of good resources there too, vsinnovation.com. Call our office, 507-252-3033. Talk to someone from our team or visit your local Boss dealer. So we are now integrating with the Boss distribution and sales channel. Okay. Not every dealer set up yet. This just started in June of 2022. Um, so we're ramping up dealers right now. I think there's around 30 set up and Boss has hundreds of dealers. But over the course of the next five years, we'd like to get them all set up. Um, if you have a dealer you like working with, you want them to get set up for VSI, just tell them like, hey, I want VSI. And hopefully we can work on getting them set up for next year. Perfect. What I'd like to do as well is I would love to do a really in-depth video where we just break it down nuts and bolts. I know we did a really high-end overview. Yeah. So if you guys want to see more, you got to comment, show us more. And if you want to see more in-depth and more detail, 
I think we could we could spend a day just yeah. going out and actually showing the product getting laid down, how you fill the trucks up, yep. going out, how the route is, doing an overview of the whole thing so guys yep. could actually physically see this entire process from stem to stern yep. and to go for it. So, but you guys, you guys got to say whether you want to see that or not. That's all we got for you on this one. God bless. Go get them. Now we're done.